Hey guys, welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. This is the third video in the Lesson Plan With Me series where I'm taking you along with me as I start to prepare our lesson plans for the upcoming school year. Quick background is that I like to fill out a lesson planner for the entire year for all of the subjects, at least a general outline of what we're gonna do for the year. It really is helpful in my homeschool in particular because it lets me see what my kids are gonna be working on at different times, see how things kind of match up, like are we really heavy on a subject on a given week, and you know, should we shift things in another subject in order to kind of lighten the load or make it a little work a little bit better? Are things going to be kind of ending as we get close to like a break or a trip or things like that? What are we gonna be reading so that way I can be prepared to help them with it? What materials do I need to gather? You know, all the things. I just find that it's really helpful for me. You might choose to lesson plan for the whole year, for a semester, for a quarter, for a week. You might not choose to do any lesson planning at all. But I do find, especially in the high school years, it is helpful because, you know, there's a lot to gather and a lot to, you know, make sure that your students um, have prepared for them. And today I'm gonna to be working on my daughter's courses. Now, my daughter's schedule is gonna be a little bit unique this year because she's doing half dual enrollment courses at a local college and she's doing half courses that I've put together for her. So she wanted to study biblical Hebrew, so that's gonna be something she's gonna study over the course of the whole year. We are gonna have her do a Bible study, so those are our devotions from Daily Grace Co. along with um, a publication from Concordia Publishing House uh, looking at the New Testament. And she's gonna do the life skills course for the first semester that I wrote. So this is a course that I put together based on, well, actually her telling me that she wanted to make sure she learned all the things before she graduated. So. Um, if you're interested in that course at all, um, I will link it down below if you want to check out the intro video for it. It's just something that I really thought would be helpful for my students and put this whole course together and then it's available if you wish to purchase it. Um, the link to my shop is always down below in the description box if you want to check out that or other homeschool resources that I have. Um, and then in the spring semester, she's going to be doing a mental health course. So the life skills course is one semester. Mental health is um, going to be a semester one as well. That is one that I'm currently in the process of writing and I'm making progress. <laughs> I am getting there, guys. I promise. Um, as soon as it is done, I will um, show it to you guys and then release it in my shop and all that jazz. But one of the big courses that she's going to do for the whole year is an anatomy and health course. This is one from Guest Hollow. And... I did a whole video really introducing this course and talking about why I think it's an important subject for uh, teens to study in particular, um, based off my experiences as a nurse and the lack of knowledge a lot of people seem to have about their health and their bodies. So I really wanted to make sure that my kids had a good understanding about how their bodies work before they graduate. I think that's important. And so that's something she's gonna do. It's also gonna be really helpful because what she wants to study in college is exercise science and nutrition. And now she has kind of the end goal of then going on and getting her master's and becoming a physical therapist. So that is, that is the route that she has kind of decided she wants to take. So having a good understanding of this before she gets to college and has to take a college level anatomy and physiology course, I think this will just be really helpful for her. Now, guest hollow courses are, um, they're not for everybody. If you want something that's just open and go and you don't want to have to do anything, it won't be the course for you. But if you have students who learn well having a variety of different things to do, or if you really wanted to have a, a truly customizable curriculum, they are fantastic. My kids really have liked them because it incorporates a lot of different things. They have a book list, so different books that they read portions of throughout the year. They have videos that are linked. There are links to online activities and free worksheets and downloads and stuff like that. There are a ton of labs and activities incorporated in them. So you get reading, you get visual things, you get different types of um, you know, activities. I mean, there's just a lot of different things to choose from. And you can customize it by kind of picking and choosing from this like smorgasbord of activities, which ones you wanna do with your student. So if your student's not really big on reading, maybe you go lighter on the reading selections and heavier on the videos and the hands-on. 
my daughter is a pretty prolific reader. She reads a lot. She reads really quick. And so doing a lot of the reading assignments is no issue, but I definitely want to make sure I'm incorporating the hands-on stuff for an anatomy course. And so we'll definitely have um, as many of those worked in to her schedule as we can. The other thing that I like to do with these types of courses, because there's no tests and there's no quizzes, is I like to do narration journals. Now, I love narration journals. I think they are a great way to ascertain how much your student is learning and retaining. Narration journals are fairly simple concepts. You have like a blank journal and you can either put in prompts for your student to answer or you can just ask them to write down things that they learned from that day. We did this back when she did Guest Hollow Botany and her narration journal by the end of the year was, it was gorgeous and I've saved it back because it's just beautiful. She had sketches, she had all kinds of different information that she had learned. I mean, I, I left it kind of up to her. I said, hey, fill out at least a page a day. And she often would fill out multiple pages with things that she found interesting and she wrote about them in that narration journal. And that's kind of the approach we're gonna take with this course. What things are you learning that are that really stuck out to you or that were really interesting to you? And, you know, she can include sketches. She can put in quotes. She can put in you know, her, her thoughts on things, or she can just put direct information. I just want to kind of give her that chance to, you know, put her thoughts down. And then, you know, I just take a look at it and I, I give a grade for it. So that's what we're definitely going to be doing as a narration journal. I think it'll work out great for this course. So I have on my laptop, I have her planner pulled up. So it's the digital planner that, um, that I made um, that's also in my shop if you if you need a good digital planner. Um, I like it because as I'm putting in the daily assignments, it's going to flow into a planner template that I can print out for her. And then um, I have the books that were listed for the first six weeks, and I have the schedule pulled up here. Because these courses have a lot to them, I like to plan them in six-week six week chunks. So I'm going to look at the first six weeks and kind of determine what we're going to do. And then as we get closer to the end of that first six weeks, I will plan out the next six weeks. It just makes it a little less overwhelming when you're all, when, you know, when it's such an involved curriculum to kind of plan it in those shorter chunks like that. So I'll kind of go back and forth between, um, you know, showing you different things and showing you things from the computer as well. But let's dive on in and take a look at what's on this schedule. And I have looked over this a little bit, but guys, I'm doing a lot of this in real time. So there's going to be things that I'm going to be checking out for the first time with you here. So you can really see how my planning process goes. But let's just take a look at the schedule and see what there is. Okay, so I have my daughter's digital planner started on here. You can see I've only got a couple of courses typed in. So these are the four that I am doing. And then what my thought is, is when we get her syllabi for her different college classes, is I will actually give her access to this and I'll let her type in her assignments for those as well. So um, as I type things in on here, they can flow over into either the one page planner view or the two page planner view. Um, and then I print these off each week for my kids to follow along with. So that's kind of the whole point of this is for me to be able to put assignments in here and shift them around and then be able to print off these planner pages. Then I have the schedule pulled up for the anatomy course. So this is kind of what they look like when you get them. There's usually a two page spread for each week. And then the different activities are split up in different categories. So uh, for this course, we have a spine book. And so that's kind of like the main book that they're going to be reading through pretty much for the whole year. Um, I got a used copy of it. It's a very used copy, but you know what? It's going to work. And that's Anatomy and Physiology Made Incredibly Easy. So there are going to be different reading assignments from this pretty much every week for the whole year. And it looks like we're going to start off with the basics. We're going to be looking at cells and human tissue on week one. And on here, you can see that there's different pages that are assigned for her to read each day. Um, now, there is a second book option. If you, it, it gave this in the book list. It said if your student doesn't like to do a whole bunch of reading, they might prefer like the visual one. I just got the main copy for her here. So you can see she's going to read just a couple of pages at a time on each day. So it's not that bad. I mean, it's like four pages a day. Not hard at all. 
Then there is a second book that is listed on here and that is Blood and Guts. And again, it's a few pages here, a few pages there. It even um, kind of tells you like an activity that you're gonna do from here. So this is the Blood and Guts book. So it's a kind of a, a short book and we're doing pages near the back. So let's see, 70 and 71. Yeah, so we're on like a little chapter about cells, basic body bits. It's just a just a pretty quick looking read. I don't think this is gonna be anything extensive, but there is an activity on here, you know, taking a temperature. I mean, she's done that, but still um, she can do that. It even has a suggestion. It says, try taking your temperature at different times in the morning after a shower, after a five mile hike. And I think that actually is something that's kind of interesting um, because your body temperature will change with those different things. And she goes to the gym most mornings and works out. So that could be something where it's like, hey, take it there. Um, I also have a digital thermometer. Um, so that could be a way for her to check her temp nice and quick and see how it varies with different activities um, throughout the day. So just a couple of days of reading assignments from this one. Now we get down into the videos. I very rarely will assign all of the videos that are listed on here. Um, sometimes I find that, you know, the videos, there will be different ones that kind of cover the same topic, but the videos will be different lengths and have varying degree of interest for the student. So I'll follow the live links on these videos and I will see how long they are and kind of what they're talking about. So Crash Course, oh, we love Crash Course videos. They're usually just so entertaining and have so much good information. So this is an 11 minute video and it is an introduction to anatomy and physiology. Definitely think that we will end up using this. Now, what I like to do is create playlists for my kids. You can actually see on my screen here, you see how I have these linked playlists on top. So world history and food science were courses that my kids did this past year. And what I did is I just went in and I organized my bookmarks. I added in um, a subfolder for each of the weeks. And then I linked videos that they were supposed to watch under that week's video. Again, something that took me a little more time on the front half of things, right? Just creating all those folders, but then it's very quick and easy for my kids to find the videos that I want them to watch. So, you know, I will look at videos like that and decide if we are going to do them. And then you can see like there is another video on the first day. And this one is, do you really have a new body every seven years? It's only a four minute video. So on this particular day, I think we will plan to go ahead and do both of the videos. Plus it's from SciShow. SciShow is another YouTube channel that I really have enjoyed finding content for my kids on. And so that's basically what I will do is I will look at the different videos that are assigned on the different days. Sometimes like here on days three and four, you can see that there's two crash course videos assigned on each day. Now again, crash course videos tend to be just a little bit longer, but if you'll notice, like there's no activity or reading assignment from blood and guts on those days. So we have less things that we're reading. So we could spend a little bit more time watching the videos, I think. So I will check those out. Then down here, labs and activities. I am so mad at myself because after both of my kids had gotten done with biology, I had a really nice microscope. I had prepared slides, I had the whole shebang. And I thought, well, we're not gonna need a microscope anymore. We're not gonna have microscope labs. And I gave it to another homeschooling family and I could kick myself because then I purchased this course. And of course there's suggestions for microscope slides. I'm not gonna buy a new microscope. It's just, it's such a big expense. And oh, I'm just so mad at myself <laughs> that I got rid of that. So we won't do any of the microscope slides. I'm a little bit bummed about that but we are going to do this Netter's Anatomy Coloring Book. There were two different anatomy coloring books that were suggested. One, it says, is very, it's very basic. Now she is, of course, going into a health field, so I felt like the more involved coloring book would be good for her. I don't actually have it in yet, but let me show you it real quick here. It's linked on Amazon. So this is Netter's Anatomy Coloring Book, and, um, it has these really cool detailed anatomy images and then labels and things like that. And there 
are studies that show that if you are like reading or hearing things and drawing, coloring, doodling at the same time, it actually will help with your retention because you're using both halves of your brain to learn the material. So I think this will be a really great way for her to review different parts of the anatomy. I know I'm not going to quiz her on it and make her memorize it. However, you know, the more you are exposed to this stuff, the more you will, you know, be able to memorize it and she's going to have to memorize it all and really know it when she gets to college. So that is something that I have ordered. So that will be coming and then we will include that on there. Then we have some different printables. So color and label an animal cell. Let's open that up and take a look. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, I think we will definitely do that. I think that's a great quick activity to have her do. And then there's a website with an interactive cell. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's a game. Oh, well that's neat, how to play. Let's look at this. Oh, fun, okay. So it's an online game that she can play. Okay. Oh, ads. Okay. So animal cell. Let's just. Oh, oh, this is neat. Yeah. Okay. I think we could definitely have her do this. How new? Cool. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I love about the guest hollow courses because I would have never thought to look this up and incorporate this into here. But what a cool way to do, you know, some practice and, and review. So yeah, we'll definitely have her do that. Okay, so what I will do is then on her planner is I will put in like the reading assignments, the activity assignments, the videos and things like that. Now, you know what, what I should probably do? Hang tight guys, let's do this. Let's move life skills over here. Because when I did this for my son, I actually split them. Um, anatomy read and let's do anatomy activities. Okay, when I did the planner for my son for his guest hollow history courses, because there's a lot of things to include in there is I actually split it into two columns in the planner. I put anything that was a reading assignment in one column and then I put videos and activities in a second column and I just made sure they were next to each other. So it just flowed into the planner a lot better and allowed me to fit all of that information in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for her too. But that is essentially what I would do is I would look at this and I would put this information in there. Now I'm not gonna write anatomy and physiology made incredibly easy read chapter one, okay? What I will probably do is put a shorthand for the book. So A and P book. And you know, I'll just discuss with her at the beginning, like, hey, that's what I mean when I say A and P book is your main book. And then pay, read page one through five, that kind of thing. When it comes to these videos, what I tend to put on the planner pages for her is just an initial title of the video. So crash course introduction video. Why is my body temp? video. And what that does is when she goes to those bookmarked for the week, bookmarks for the week, is she can just look for the starting title of the video that matches what I put on there. That has worked really well for us in the past and that is what I will just keep on doing. And then I'll put in things like, you know, under activities, um, netters color 1-1, netters color 1-4, and then I'll kind of look at the how the week plays out. So for like this color and label an animal cell and the interactive cells. Like obviously wanna, wanna make sure that she's finished the reading on those parts before she does those activities. Um, so, I mean, if we're, if we're looking at like the cell here, we're looking at that like on Tuesday. So maybe Tuesday would be a good day to have her do the color and label page. And then a couple days later, like on Thursday or Friday, have her do the interactive like game as kind of a review. And then of course she's filling out her narration journal for each day. When we get into week two, we are introducing a different book. So we're not reading from Blood and Guts for that. So that doesn't mean we're all done with this book. It just means that we're gonna read different portions of it on different weeks. Um, so instead of what we're doing is we're diving into a book called Inheritance. Now this is a little bit of a longer book. And so there are chapters that are assigned for her to read on different days. And again, she's a pretty prolific reader, so I don't think she's gonna have a problem with this. This would be an example of a book that would be kind of optional for you to do. So they always have like the spine books ranked um, as a number one, like a book not to skip. 
but the extra reading books are things that are optional. So if your kid's not a big reader, you don't necessarily have to read this, but you know, she's going to. And then the same deal with the videos. Most of these days here, you can see there's only one video and then there's just two on Thursday, Friday. Here we go. We got some cool activities on here though. I'm excited about these. This is, this will be fun. So there's an edible DNA model activity. Ah, how fun. I totally want to do this. All right. So this is linked to the guest hollow site. Make a licorice and marshmallow DNA model. I mean, yeah. Is it a little bit simple for a high school senior? Yes. Will she love doing it? Absolutely. Because it's candy. <laughs> She's going to make a candy model. Totally will do that. And, and in fact, I'm sure she can make several and her brother will help her eat them. So yes, definitely going to do that. Now here's another act, um, optional kit. So there is this um, genetics and DNA kit that was an option you can purchase. Oh, it's not that expensive. It's only $28. I might, I might order that if it's got a couple things. Oh, it's got some Petri dish activities and things like that. So that is an option, right? To be able to do those activities. It looks like isolate DNA from a tomato in a test tube, learn about traits, but there's an other option on here. Okay. So this is looking at, at different traits and things. There is another optional activity, DNA from strawberries. Now I have actually done this experiment before we have done DNA extraction. Um, uh, my troop did it for a badge. And I can't remember what the badge was, but we did DNA extraction and it was really cool and it works and it's just kind of fascinating. You can do it from um, bananas as well, DNA extraction from bananas. So this uses household materials. Oh yeah, I think we'll, def we'll do this because I have everything we need for it. That'll be perfect. Okay, so DNA extraction from that. So what we'll do is we will do that instead of some of these other activities. So if I don't purchase this genetics and um, DNA kit, what I could do is maybe do the edible DNA model on Monday, the candy one, and then have her do like the extracting DNA from strawberries on Wednesday. And we will, we will do that. And then you can, then you can see there are again, lots of um, other links to websites and things. So let's just take a quick peek and see what some of these are. So here are, oh, this is like a whole bunch of extra resources. Oh, this is neat. Transfer RNA paper model. So this is cool. So see, again, another resource that I wouldn't have known about. So there's a lot of different things you can do. DNA origami, um, your genome and you microbiome lesson plans. So I could kind of peek through this and maybe pick an activity to have her do to take the place of this uh, Thames and Cosmos DNA kit. I think we could definitely do that. And then, oh, here we go. Some fact sheets you can print out. So this would be something where I might choose something to print out and again, put in like that three ring binder as like a resource for her. So here's some information on this and a really cool infographic and stuff like that. So those are the kind of resources that I will kind of pick and choose from. And then I just kind of go through each of the weeks in a similar fashion. So again, you know, we're reading the next, the next week, we're actually not reading from the spine book. We're reading from the cartoon guide to genetics and reading select pages from that and you can see it kind of jumps all over the place. We've got a bunch of different videos because DNA um, and genetics is one of those things where like the initial concepts on it are pretty straightforward, but it definitely gets very complicated the more in depth you get on it. My guess is that this book on inheritance is probably a pretty in depth book. Um, I am definitely going to read this kind of along with her. This talks about the human genome. My goodness. Okay. Like just a few things from this book. It says why you may have recovered from the psychological trauma caused by childhood bullying. Your genes may remain scarred from lot for life. Um, how fructose is the sugar that makes fruit sweet. But if you have certain genes consuming, it can buy you a one way trip to the coroner's office. Why ingesting common painkillers is like dosing yourself repeatedly with morphine. If you have a certain set of genes, I mean, 
just some really interesting information. I think this will be a really cool book to do. Um, all right, back down to these activities though, because let's take a look at this because there's a DNA coloring page. I mean, we could have her do that. I don't know if we for sure will because she's gonna have the coloring, the anatomy coloring book that she's gonna be doing. And again, that anatomy coloring, well, there's no anatomy coloring that week. Hmm. Click and clone game. What is this? Use what you know about somatic cell nuclear transfer. Let's try it out. Your mission is to create a genetically identical clone of Mimi, a brown female mouse. <gasps> Ooh, okay. I kinda wanna play this game, is that wrong? I'm gonna get way too distracted here. Oh my, this could be cool. Okay, all right, definitely gonna have her do that. I think that is cool. And then, let's see, we've got some other options for activities. So yeah, I'll definitely look through and link some online activities and some printables and all kinds of stuff. Like, oh, like look how many cool things are on here, guys. I mean, really. There are so many neat resources out there and I love it. I love it that they have done the work of finding all of this stuff for me. Now I just get to pick and choose which of these things I wanna do. So this is what I'm gonna do for the first six weeks. I will take a look at the books and then the videos and put those in the lesson planner. Typically I do that first and then I will pick and choose activities. Um, just a couple of other books that she's gonna read sections of. So she is going to be reading some parts of Dead Man Dead Men Do Tell Tales, The Strange and Fascinating Cases of a Forensic Anthropologist. Could be cool. And then she's going to read a little bit from Guinea Pig Scientists, Bold Self-Experimenters in Science and Medicine. Okay. Um, as far as topics in these first six weeks, so we, again, we're starting with like the cells and tissues. We're getting into DNA and genetics, so she's spending two weeks on those. Then we're getting into the skeletal system, uh, so that's obviously going to be really involved. Lots of coloring in the in the anatomy coloring book. Um, then let's see, week five, we're still on the skeleton. Why do your knuckles pop? Oh, oh, I hate it when my kids crack their knuckles. <laughs> like it's like the worst thing in the world. Um, so that'll be an interesting video to have her watch. And then we are gonna start into the muscular system. So some big topics to do. Um, lots of different activities on here that, that she's gonna be able to check out and try. Um, yeah, so yeah, should be pretty neat. Um, I'm excited for that. So I will spend some time here and I'm gonna get this put into that digital planner. And that is essentially what I will do um, now for things like the hands-on activities. So if she does like the making the model of the DNA or if there's other activities, if it's an activity that's linked directly in this schedule or a lab link directly in it, at the beginning of the schedule, there's actually a list of materials needed by week and by activity. So I can see really quickly what things I need to gather. If it's something like, hey, here's this website with lots of different types of resources, then I would have to look, you know, what that particular activity calls for and, and plan for that. Um, that's the kind of thing that I will put usually down in like the notes section of, of, of planner. So I can either put it like on the planner page itself in the notes section, or I will jot it down what it is I need to gather, you know, for those weeks. And again, just like how I plan things out in six weeks blocks, I tend to try to gather materials at the same time. So I'll try to get everything that I can for that six weeks. If it's something that is, um, like something that will go back, <laughs> I can't use my words today. Things like the strawberries for the DNA extraction, that might not be till week two or week three. So I'm not gonna buy that in advance. I'll just make a note like, you know, hey, make sure to buy strawberries for such and such a date, that kind of thing. Uh, so that is really what I will do to plan those six weeks. I think this is gonna be a really fun course. I'm so excited. Just checking out some of these resources and these links for the first time. I mean, I have a feeling I'm gonna go down some rabbit holes here and, um, you know, find myself playing around with it for a bit. But that is what I'm gonna do to get anatomy planned for her. Okay, so I'm gonna get this stuff typed into her digital planner and that way we will have the first six weeks all set and ready to go. 
if you have questions for me on the anatomy course, on the digital planner, on lesson planning in general, anything like that, drop a comment down below and I will be sure to try to answer those for you. If you want to find out more about the anatomy course in detail, I will link the video where I did an introduction to this course for you. It really kind of shows all of the different components and information on the book lists and all of that stuff and kind of explains how those courses work in a little more detail. But I'm super excited to do this course. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video, everybody. I will see you in the next one. And until then, happy homeschooling. Thank you.